Hey there, everyone. Welcome to the Biomonstra Academy office hours. This is where you can ask us anything on MDT, Config Manager, Intune, and whatnot. We also started to have like a short update section at the beginning of this show, just going through what happened the last week in the community. And uh, with that being said, once again, welcome and welcome, Andrew. And let's uh, get it going. All right, good to have you back, Andrew. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to be back. Yeah, I missed you last week. They 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 worked me hard. <laughs> <I was just laughs> the whole session. Oh man, no, I missed you too. But I'm glad they kept you honest last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sure did. So, uh, what have you been up to? Uh, so much that I almost don't even. Uh, last week's a blur. Um, I was actually just playing around a, a little bit before our call here with uh, the Intune Debug Toolkit that came out from uh, uh, Matthias Melkerson from the MSN Point Manager uh, team. Yeah. Um, I actually have it up if you don't mind me sharing here a little bit. I don't mind at all. Get my screen going. Showing up, prepared and all. I'm, in, I'm impressed. Well, I don't know about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was just starting to play around with this a little bit. This has been a, uh, this seems like a pretty hot topic the last couple of days. This was actually a 2.0 update to this tool, um, sort of a collection of tools. And it's not just Matthias. There's a whole bunch of community members listed here um, that help out um, maintain this solution. So um, I'll, I'll share this link and make sure we get it up um after the fact, but basically it looks like there are a couple of, of solutions here, a couple of tools that actually help diagnose um, and debug things related to Intune and Autopilot. Uh, so I actually have this toolkit uh, downloaded onto uh, one of my Intune uh, enrolled devices uh, that we used in our previous Intune course. Um, and I thought it would be cool just to just to launch a couple of these tools to see kind of what it looks like. Um, one I saw the autopilot readiness tool. So this looked like it um, did a few different checks for network connectivity and a couple of other things just to make sure that a device is ready to be uh, onboarded into autopilot, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, you know, we're, we're always big fans of any of these. We have such an amazing community here. So we're always big fans of any of these tools that sort of make these things in our life a little bit easier. Right. So, um, it looks like this script basically just shows a few things such as the windows edition, the version of windows when it was installed bios version, uh, which isn't too interesting on my VM, but it's there. Host name. Uh, and then a and then a bunch of network a uh, bunch of connection tests just to make sure that we can actually contact all the uh, correct endpoints with Microsoft, uh, which is a real nice uh, sanity check, I suppose. Uh, so what else do we have here? Uh, I do know one of the tools is the uh, SyncML tool uh, from Oliver the sync ML viewer that you, I, I think you're very familiar with this tool, Johan. Uh, it's just once or twice <laughs> where you can basically, if I recall correctly, it'll trigger a sync to Intune, right? And then you can sort of get some debug level information on what's happening with that sync. I was really useful to see what policies that are coming down sometimes, uh, Log files are good, event log is good, but this provides some additional insight that was valuable, or have been valuable. So yeah. I think we mentioned the tool briefly last week, but it was nice to to have it integrated as part of the collection. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. So again, just some uh, high-level information about the device. So some cool stuff in here. 
um, worth checking out for sure. I think there was an overview here. I think this might be the one that downloads the, um, one of the PowerShell modules that helps write to a web page and then pops up a, a web page that shows your assigned policies and assigned applications and things like that. Um, but like a summary report type. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, just another nice, um, an, another nice tool in our tool belt, I think. Let's see. Very dark well, at the moment. Yeah. Well, a couple of times I've launched the tool and I don't know if it's just something on my device or what, but a couple of times I've launched one of the tools and it's just sat here for a moment, but eventually it goes through and spits out, you know, a report or, um, like the autopilot one, for example, that'll sit there for a moment and then, and then it'll start passing back all the information. Yeah. We can go back and see if it spit out that web page of yours and, uh, uh, yeah. See then. All right. Definitely. Was there any other tool you wanted to show there? Um, do, 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 do. let's see. We've got diagnostic data, Windows Update for Business readiness. You know, that's I get excited about Windows Update for Business. Let's see what that one fires up. I think you accidentally clicked in the console there. I can see a little bit cursor. Hit enter and it goes away. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There we go. It's effective way to pause the PowerShell script, though. <laughs> I may have done that a few times as well. Yeah, yeah, I believe there's nothing happening. Like, oh yeah, you're idiot. You're <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Well, oh, there we go. Sure, show you something. Mm -hmm. Show some Windows update logs. There we go. Some more general information and a bunch of red. So it looks like I've probably got a do something there if I want to have this device fully onboarded into Windows Update for Business, but. All right. Yeah. So update, uh, update summary and readiness for Windows Update for Business. That's pretty cool. Well, congratulations then. Yeah. I think so I'll have to fix some of these things and get this device in there. Yeah. All right. And speaking on this topic, there was actually a gentleman in the chat chiming in and basically uh, stating that just moved from a company that was 100% on premises uh, to a company that was the opposite, everything in cloud. <clears throat> I just noticed that there was a bit of a jump to do that right away. And uh, as most of you probably know, depending on what you've been using before, that there are still gaps in, in the platform. There are things that you can very easily do uh, in a config man environment that turns out to be really difficult in an Intune environment. But uh, the gap is closing, uh, products improving by the day or by the week at least. So that's kind of nice. Not, not to mention again, you know, just to reiterate the the awesomeness of the community where there are gaps there's a lot of people that are that are really putting in some serious effort to try to plug those gaps while we wait for microsoft to do it natively yeah so i mean i mean it it basically pays off when, when you have a systems management stack that is out there and managing 240 million enterprise devices you are not the only one doing stuff there are yeah. other people doing the same thing. Uh, so you're rarely the first one that stumbled across an issue or, or having a, a question about something or needed a script for something. Someone else often has, has figured out that uh, already. So I always love the, 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 the systems management community has been part of my career for, I don't know, 20 some years now, at least. Uh, 
I had scorched the internet a while ago just to figure out like, like when was my first post, and I found one from 1994. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I was helping someone out in a 3D rendering community with something. So I was, I was like, okay, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask what was it about. Did you dig it up through like an old, uh, what were the old usernames I used 20, 30 years ago, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I, re- I don't remember them unluckily. It helps <laughs> having a unique name. Uh huh. We're like 10 people in the world with this last name, and, and so far it's only two of us doing systems management. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you know the other one, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. There was a question coming in on LinkedIn. Um, uh, that's for you, Andrew. <laughs> Uh, how did I install the Windows Update for Business Readiness tool? So that was um, through the Intune Debug Toolkit um, that was released by Matthias Melkerson uh, from MS Endpoint Manager uh, earlier this week. And yeah, so, so I, this is just a yeah. collection of tools there. One of them is the uh, Windows Update Business uh, Windows Update for Business Readiness tool. All right. Any other questions out there? We'll be happy to answer pretty much everything related to uh, MDT, Config Manager, Intune, OST, scripts, Azure here and there. <laughs> uh, that HTML report did generate while we were chatting. Winning. Yes. <laughs> Um, so not a, not a ton going on on this device, but we can see where, uh, if I had application policies assigned, I did assign one a little bit ago. It looks like it just hasn't come down yet. Uh, so this will give us an overview of applications assigned to the device, proactive remediation scripts assigned to the device, um, policy settings and any, uh, issues if they, if there are any, um, so again, just a, another compartmentalized tool um, to show basically the policies and settings that are assigned to this device and and if they're working properly. Oh, it does look like I do have a, a couple of applications from the Microsoft Store for Business shown up here. So it shows that those are assigned. I don't know about you, Johan, but I'm a big fan of these things that give us a, you know, when we're trying to troubleshoot something new, give us a high level overview of some of the basics, like, you know, right there. That's good stuff. Hopefully it'll speed some things up. Yeah, there was another tool that I uh, stumbled across. Uh, Forgot if you ever showed it here in the office hours uh, i know i show, showed it in one of the trainings but it's um i can steal the screen and share actually um, this one here mm-hmm. uh into device details uh, and you simply search for device and then you, you click create report uh, uh, this one here uh, and then it just spits out a lot of information about that device, uh, all the assignments, applications, configurations, and uh, a lot of info about that device in just a single pane. So I've been using this. This has been a uh, helpful tool, and it's good that it's uh, apparently encrypted and compliant. That, that's not hey. too bad. So oh. Very cool. Yeah, that's uh, another great tool. Yeah, so it was from Petri, a gentleman in Finland, uh, been part of the community for a long time, it's a Microsoft MPP, but uh, we'll make sure to share the link to this one as well. Uh, I found that link, by the way, for the tool that you were showing. It turned out that I actually had been to that site a few times before. <laughs> the, the MS Endpoint Manager site? Yeah, probably yeah. not not more than 2,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? Yeah. Uh, maybe three then. All right. Let's see if I can find that link from Patreon. Give me a moment and I'll go ahead and share that one too. 
Yeah, I, I like know. to think that we've that we've added one or two hits to their uh, to their website stats. <laughs> Copy URL. I love when they do that. It's <laughs> just a right click. <laughs> yes. But good stuff. I wonder if they have released an update of that one. I haven't checked that one in a while. Uh, oh, thank you so much for. I had no idea. <laughs> ah, no, two ninety-five is I say the latest source, but I put this one in the in the link collection. For those of you that are new to our platform, all these links that we showcase and share in the session. Uh, we publish them up on the Academy site as well as on our YouTube channel. So um, YouTube, my Monstra Academy. Apparently there's a live stream going on. Surprise. But, uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, it's true. All of it. <laughs> so if you're not subscribing, by all means, I'll be happy if you do. So uh, we'll keep you notified when we go live. Yeah. Tech stuff. All right. Did we have any other fun question coming in? All right. There was a question regarding standalone media, in particular driver installation. Let's see if there were any more details. Uh, can be a lot of things why, why drivers are not added. Uh, if you are using, for example, the modern driver management platform, that one by default is not supported on standalone media because it's using the download package content action in Config Manager, which is not supported in, in standalone media. So what I had to do for a few customers, uh, you can work with their offline XML, the, 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 the platform supports that, but let's see if I have any examples. Well, not that one, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I remember playing around with it at one point. MDM offline media support sounds about right to me. Yeah, so it's a, just a, a script that uh, instead of using the dynamics, it just looks for a driver package as a WIM file and stage it in the exit and then be done with it. So um, I can definitely go ahead and share that script. Uh, I know the guy who wrote it, so. <laughs> um, see what I have in my GitHub. There is nothing like a, a live commit. Uh, let's see, DR file scripts, uh, MDM offline media, something like that. I will do uh, GitHub, not that one, but this one. Surprised there was a change. <laughs> All right, so, so that script is up there. So this one is optimized for offline media. Otherwise, we just use the built-in script, the uh, apply driver script as is. So maybe that could help. Uh, obviously, the, the, the big leap to get any driver deployment to work good these days is to make sure to actively stay away from using driver packages here. Just don't do it. Instead, have uh, driver packages here. So packages with drivers instead of driver packages. Because if you take a look at, at one of these, um, this one here, for example, uh, it's so much more effective in any shape or form to work with WIM files. 
compared to having a thousand small files in, in a package. Uh, I mean, obviously this one will have all the drivers in it per the vendor, but it's nicely organized in a single whim instead. So I will start probably something like that. If you are having troubles with drivers in media, well, stay away from driver packages, use normal packages for them, put them in win files. And since the default script doesn't support offline, unless you do some customization, you can still steal the script that I, that I sent over there earlier. Uh, so, all right. So there's a question on Facebook coming in. Basically, someone is using uh, Dell Precision T5500, uh, not liking Windows 11, apparently, uh, CPU and other reasons. Uh, what's your recommendation? Uh, another PC good for running, uh, config manager to make sure. Basically, what, what, what is our recommendation for a lab PC uh, running Windows 11? I mean, the thing is, these days you can pretty much get anything that is just have enough memory and disk CPU to run a lab. I mean, in our, this week we're running a, a, a config manager course, uh, and these lab machines are, we have a bunch of them, but what we're talking about, four or five year old boxes that will happily performance wise run a config manager lab with you know to make controllers site servers and 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 what bunch of clients in it so pretty much any desktop that you can buy it will happily run a config manager lab these days uh, our core recommendations is obviously uh, use and the disks when you have a chance because uh, they are so much faster. But if you buy a new PC, you actually have to hunt pretty hard to find what that doesn't have, an NVMe SSD. Uh, so simply buy what they, what they come with. Uh, if you want to get fancy, uh, Supermicro have some fine, shiny machines that can be powerful workstations, but they are mainly targeted for server OSs. But otherwise, pretty much any HP, Dell, Lenovo, that supports Windows 11, you, you can use as a lab. Even laptops these days, you can get a laptop with like 128 gigs of memory. But the thing with labs is that if you buy a laptop, you pay like twice the price compared to a desktop with the same performance. So most of my lab these days, they are desktops for that reason. I used to carry around laptops always with me, but since the last two or three years, nah. Not so much. Yeah, we've Any had a thoughts lot of, on that, Andrew? Andrew. No, we've had a lot of luck with those. Uh, you and I have both picked up a few Optiplexes recently in the yeah. last year. Uh, the yeah. micros that I yeah. think we've both been pretty happy with. Um, Tiny, powerful. In in regarding some of the the processor issues with Windows 11, I mean, neither one of us have had an issue running it on our older lab computers either right i mean you'll have some things that get a little grumpy about it but i haven't had any issues deploying it in a vm no definitely not in a, in a vm even the cpu is subjecting it's more like if you run the setup the start up from the media that's going to complain and say hey this is not compliant but you can always deploy it anyway uh, it's mm -hmm. typically don't complain too much but i mean i, I get it if you want to have a production device that uh, you want to have full support you can mm -hmm. work with all the the features that are, are in it. But yeah, I mean, even the NUC devices that we have showcased here a few times, uh, uh, the Intel ones, mm -hmm. tiny, small, quiet, they are powerful. They will happily run any config manager lab easily. So, I mean, find a PC that's with Windows 11 compatible and buy it, and that, that will run the lab just fine. Mm -hmm. I remember Michael's uh, Pelican case full of Nook computers. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. That was a classic. 
I wonder if he still had those pictures on his blog. Oh yeah. We used to go on tour with this case. So that has, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there are six different knock devices in a Pelican case that we do launch through uh, airports and trains and, uh, and whatnot. But that was uh, like two cluster nodes and it was, it was great fun. We did all the demos from this on stage. So cool stuff. I will definitely share that link in the chat as well. <clears throat> That's awesome. That still brings a smile to my face. <laughs> it was just, okay, this was cool. And it, it yeah. didn't get even warm either. Uh, I expected it to, to get hot, but no, heck no, they, they kept cool. So that was nice. Uh, other than that, I mean, on, on the Academy, if you are interested in setting up a lab, we, we have free courses for the community on that topic specifically where we spend a good chunk of time on basically, all right, doing stuff. So since the price is, I'll say, reasonable, uh, it's a good good show to, to watch. As we usually say, if you have family in France, invite them to a movie night on Friday and Get beer and popcorn and yeah. listen to Johan talk about building a lab. There you go. All right, let's see what else is coming in. Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, we had a discussion earlier on, it was basically around driver management in general. Uh, we had a thread going on Twitter this week. Uh, I guess this was this weekend. Well, Monday. Yeah, weekend Monday-ish. Uh, around the, the fact that vendors uh, sometimes pick naming our models like out of the blue. Like we learned the hardware this week that, that VMware, for example, sometimes injects a space in the serial numbers like <laughs> why <laughs> why would you have a space in a serial number and uh, don't get me started on the nova where they have all these machine types that is basically a four or larger digit number and then a batch number after that instead of just hey it's a thing but something like, tell me so even the uh, solution i mentioned earlier uh, we have applied this across MDT, we have applied it across uh, M uh, PSD, across Config Manager, but if you take a look what the community is doing uh, for that, it's, it's basically... taking different model names and trying to figure out better ways to deal with with stuff. So in the PSD platform, we even added in like model alias and system alias, just to get a naming that is more normalized than just a model would, would, would tell you. Mm -hmm. So that's like an ongoing process that have been for a while. I mean, we probably wrote the first model alias script like 10 years ago to support MDT's driver platform. Because that one didn't have it from the, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So on that note. All right. Speaking of PSD, you guys just released a pretty big update, didn't you? We did. Last week, uh, covered it briefly in the session. I did a okay. uh, live import of 22H2 of Windows 11, and it worked. It was the first time I tested it, so it was like, a, whew, good there. So that one worked. But yeah, that, that one is up on Friends of MDT, a uh, new major version, uh, for sure. Uh, spent a lot of time on this one. And up on the... Um, Let's get that link in the collection. 
and also released a video uh, last week. So that was on the uh, Diplomat Research uh, YouTube channel. So it's a half an hour video on how to set it up and get it going. Uh, so that one was fun. I think that was my Friday morning. I couldn't wait for my family to get home. I had to watch it, watch it before. <laughs> yeah, I'll put that link in the collection. But that that was that was fun to do. Uh, that was a nice nice video. Easy to understand the setup and everything. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. All right. There was a question coming in on YouTube here. Um, can you recommend a solution to gather all the hardware info, including warranty status for Dell devices using Intune? I wonder if not Damien did something for that. I've, I've not done nothing myself in that area. But I'm pretty sure either the MS endpoint folks or Damien did it. Let's see. Yeah, because I wonder if the... I'm going to take a look here to see if the Intune... Uh, custom reporting proactive remediation script if that uploads the service tag for a device i would think you'd be able to gather that warranty information yeah so something that hmm I just found the old warranty checker that I put together. But I mean, proactive remediation scripts upload to log analytics. I would do it. And some reports. I didn't find a ready-made solution for Intune. If someone happened to know one, feel free to post it in the chat and I'll be happy to share it. There are some, I mean, if you guys go to our friends here again, on Endpoint Manager and you search for Dell Warranty. You will see a good show post related to it. Um, and I also found a Reddit thread with uh, some PowerShell samples around it. But nothing I have tested exclusively for Intune. Find anything there, Andrew? No, I'm pretty much running across the same stuff. Oh. Yeah. And and I think I'm with you. Um, nothing ready-made, but if you're using uh, one of the proactive remediation scripts and uploading that information to Log Analytics, you should be able to grab the service tag and maybe do something automated there. 
which is what I believe they were doing with the old warranty tool, or at least I assume. There are plenty of posts or workbooks here on on bias reporting uh, that they put together. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so should be able to tap into some of this from it. Because it is still re reading that information. We just need that additional check for, for warranty. And there yeah. are quite a good chunk of examples out there, PowerShell examples, on how to achieve that. Yeah, and I think in that article, Jan has the custom inventory script that you can deploy out there. Yeah, I haven't checked this one or haven't seen it before, but this looked pretty promising. A gazillion of, of PowerShell scripts to gather that information, different uh, platforms. Nice. So maybe that. Put that in the link collection as well, together with the search for uh, the bias stuff. I think good chances of finding useful stuff is um, this one here, uh, Damien, um, Europe. He has posted a lot of stuff related to uh, customization in this area or sample scripts and whatnot. So maybe review that one as well. I'll add that to the list so we have it. Like doing live searches. <laughs> All right. After a while, you, you kind of learn which folks that are providing like reliable and, and good stuff, and you start searching and include their name in their search uh, to find good information. Oh, yeah. Hopefully that will be helpful. <clears throat> See what else is coming in. Um, there's a question from on Facebook uh, from Matt. Uh, any recommendations to use toast notifications? for end user to or block other screen utility uh, for production environments. Um, the only two I have seen and, and uh, so, um, good Lord, is it imap.dk? Yes, but there is a bl blog also. Let's see if I go to that one first. Hope it's that site. <laughs> it was. Phew. Um, here, most viewed post. Isn't that pretty amazing? <laughs> yeah. 300,000 views on a notification script but this has been updated like multiple times 
Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it does provide really nice notifications and you deploy them through config manager. And I mean, Martin has worked with this script for, as you can see, for, for quite some time. Uh, we talked about it in, in earlier uh, sessions uh, uh, here in the academy, but this is a great and nice looking solution. Um, for sure. And then Gary Block is the only one I know that has a reasonable uh, a, a lock screen that they used uh, when he was still at the uh, large bank. Uh, <laughs> uh, lock screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Gary should probably not give us up his IT career for, for a designer, but uh, <laughs> it does work. So, uh, that one should do it. That's good. I hadn't seen that one before. Uh, he did an update later the following year, but it's part of a sequence collection. So if you go to the the main blog, um, uh, it has this sequence collection that you can download that holds a lot of this stuff uh, in it. So useful. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see what else we have. Okay, this was fun coming on YouTube. Uh, do you have any thoughts on how to explain or show a, show and explain benefits of Intune Config Manager over other products to upper management CIO types? Uh, well, sales talk is is not exactly my my forte, but I I, I do have the opportunity many times to, to do speak with management about why doing certain things. And my take on Intune and Config Manager uh, over the competition is that they are by far the biggest market. Or it, it, to me, that's pretty much a standard on how to do systems management. There are so much information out there. It's very well tested. And uh, I, I, I would not consider finding another systems management platform uh, over these cases. I'm obviously heavily biased, but I, I, especially if you want managing Windows machine uh, or Windows machines, uh, I would definitely go with Intune and Config Manager just because they are a de facto standard on how to do management of these platforms. That, that's yeah. my take on it. I mean, I think the, don't quote me on this, but I think the last time I saw a percentage of enterprise Windows devices that were managed by Config Manager or Intune was, uh, like you said, far and away, that's what's being used. Like 70 plus percent of enterprise devices out there are managed by Intune or Config Manager, uh, I, I believe. Um uh, maybe just some suggestions if there's some specific problems that management is trying to solve. Um, do a couple of Google searches and see what you come up with uh, as far as config manager solutions versus uh, another competing platform. Um, and I think to your point, Johan, so many people use them. It's, it's much more likely that you're going to find a solution using config manager in tune than a lot of the other platforms. Again, also heavily biased, uh, but that's definitely um, that's definitely been my experience. One of the reasons so many years ago I moved on from a, a competing platform um, was, again, back to the community and back to the support that you can get and 
I have to imagine, given that Microsoft not only releases the operating system, but the tool to manage it, that they've got a little bit, uh, a little bit deeper knowledge or at least deeper hooks into the OS with these platforms. Uh, would be my guess. <laughs> yeah, no, that's excellent. Good stuff. Uh, let's see. Okay, Ryan had a question regarding rebuilding an MDT lab that wasn't backed up. Yeah, that's let's see what a follow up comment is. Uh, trying to recall information about adding a line to the sequence that would delete a particular file before grabbing an image. <clears throat> uh, okay, I think you know what you're after. There is a... If you use uh, MDT to build and capture uh, stuff, and there are things that you may use during deployment that you then don't want to have... Uh, in the image, of course, you can add a script into the sequence that just deletes it just before capturing. But there is a file uh, in play. Let's see if I can find it in the template section. This one. Vimscript.ini. This one contains a listing of all the stuff you don't want uh, being captured in the image. And this one you can, of course, uh, modify to your heart's content. Uh, I haven't looked in this one in, in quite a while, but this one still exists. So that is good. Do we have contract workers in your house, Andrew? <laughs> yeah, can you hear them? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, geez. I guess my noise canceling headphones are really drowning it out. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was here first. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Yes, oh. drilling, uh, drilling holes in a quartz countertop today. Wow, it's going to be a shiny office. So, yes. We'll have to do like a live camera tour through it once it's ready. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's see. Um, Chad had a question. Uh, it was basically a follow-up comment to the competition talk we had. Uh, a big plus in my mind is open documentation plus the large community and basically incredible contributions in the community that I, I, I could not agree more. Uh, having a largest market share by far uh, and the willingness of people helping, that is... It's outstanding. It is nothing beats that. Uh, a CEO may not necessarily understand that as a value, but it is a value uh, to having the community available. Um, so yeah. Let's see what else. Uh, Doctor Ghost is asking, what's the best way to replicate? uh and entity server to production servers um, that depends i've seen uh i've worked with customers who use uh large-scale replicas basically using dfsr replicas uh, out of one deployment share uh, and just spread them out in a hub and spoke model and, and that works fairly well as long as you make a link replication of this one on the same server and it's that linked replica that you you spread out because otherwise you'll find out when you're modifying this it may cause interesting side effects uh, especially if someone else tried to do a modification also uh, on a remote server other than that i mean 
say that this was my uh, dev test uh, deployment share and this one is my production. And they don't even have to be on the same server. You can open up deployment shares like over the network as well as a UNC path. So if I have something that I am extremely proud over the, here, uh, I really like my, um, I don't know what, uh, Office 365 application. It's just a copy and paste in between and, and, and put it here. So, and it, it takes care of everything else. So promoting stuff is so easy in, in between the platforms. And of course you can script this as well if you want, but if it's just about promoting a few things that you have tested, this is brilliant. Open them the side by side in the in, in the workbench and just copy and paste stuff. So, either way, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, <clears throat> also, question from Eddie regarding uh, basically the lack of reporting inventory in Intune. Uh, yes, that is a very, very common. Or well, maybe it was this config manager. No, reports from Intune. Uh, yeah, that, that is a bummer. And, and, and in our training set, we get the question every, every, every single time, like, okay, what, what can we do to make it better? And Microsoft is slowly getting there. They, they, they did all the plumbing work back in 2020 and 2021 to make it faster because prior to that, as we talked about, it, it could take hours and hours to get data through. But we, we are basically back at what, what the, the, the community can offer at the moment. So we have showcased this utility probably, utility, uh, solution uh, over and over as a fantastic example on how you can tap into additional data that you collect in Intune, as long as you don't mind doing a little bit of, of legwork yourself to get it going. I wish that there was, like, if, if you compare this, say that you have a config man environment and you are used to be able to go into, uh, let's see if I have the console open somewhere here you are used to go into your, your reports and you click here and you have like 500 some ready-made reports or 485 reports. I wish that that was available in Intune as well. I wish there was good inventory out of the box from the clients up to the platform so we can actually run reports against it. But as of now, there are very few reports built into the platform and you kind of have to rely on the community to, or, or yourself, uh, to build those. So that, that's a big gap, obviously, but at least it's doable. Uh, the platform supports it, it just it doesn't come with a bunch of ready-made reports. I mean, there are a few, but it's not like there are 400 of them. Uh, Follow-up question was, what's the best way to uh, to, to get software inventory? Uh, that basically having your own custom scripts running on the clients that gets the information that you want, send it up to update compliance or log analytics and parse it through workbooks or scripts or plain queries uh, on the server side. P put it this way that there is nowhere in Intune currently where you can go to, say, uh, a client setting and um, say that, oh, you know what, hardware inventory, I would love it. And I would like to have the following stuff inventoried. It doesn't have it. You have to script that part or borrow someone else's script.
Great questions. I think we have time for one more. Any final questions? Did I miss one? We missed one for Matt. Sorry about that. Uh, what license do we need for Home Lab? Uh, for Config Manager, just get a trial license from the Evaluation Center. Uh, they are valid for 180 days. You have licenses for Windows, for Windows Server, Client, Config Manager, SQL, everything you need there. Uh, in terms of Intune, uh, an EMS E5 trial is a good one. I know you, Andrew, you are a big fan of the Microsoft 365 developer one as well. Yep. And that way that gives you um, a bit more of an opportunity to see some of the other things in that ecosystem. You know, uh, Azure AD, office licensing, things like that can be helpful. I think in my experience, if you're if you're managing something like Intune or Config Manager, you're going to run across those other those other products anyways. So yeah, definitely been a big fan of that. Yep, sounds good. All right, there was a final question coming in. Also, it was, okay, where can we find that script? I will <clears throat> definitely share that um, because this link here has all those scripts that are required for that solution. Uh, do you remember what episode of Office Hours you showcased this? Well, what day was that released? September 14th, it looks like. So it, it may actually be from that day. I think <laughs> I think I may have edited on the fly like an hour after this blog post came out. That sounds about right. Yeah, so apparently we have a video of this uh, from uh, September 14. And that will be up on the YouTube channel as well. But uh, yeah, good stuff. Did I miss any questions, Andrew? I don't believe so. Oh, uh, we had a question on YouTube. Oh, no, you just answered it. Sorry. Um, no, the only thing that I wanted to mention again is, what is it, next week? Ignite? Yes, 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 yes. So with Sign any up. luck, we'll have a busy office hours next week. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. So, yeah, it starts starts Wednesday. Yeah. All right, then. Looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for the many good questions. And again, thank you, Andrew. Uh, thank you. With us. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for, for joining. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.